Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today I'm doing a follow-up video to a video I did at the beginning of this year all about nine brands I wanted to try in 2019. Honestly, looking back on this year, I didn't get out of, I guess, this little mini project what I wanted to and I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about why that is. So if you missed the original nine video, nine brands I want to try this year, I'll throw the original video up in the cards and it was from January 8th of this year. And specifically, I mentioned that there were a lot more smaller and indie brands that I really wanted to reach out and try because at that point, I feel like I had already gotten to know my way around every brand in like a Sephora and an Ulta and I really wanted to branch out and try new things and I did do that but to only an extent. So I'm going to go through each brand. So first I just want to talk about the brands I just didn't try at all and didn't get around to. Um, the first one was Sydney Grace Cosmetics. I suck at using single brand single shadows. I just do and I never got around to picking up their palette because I think it was pretty much sold out. It was like the Autumn's Rain palette. I have no idea if it's still in stock right now. I still haven't tried the brand and I really don't know if I'm going to force myself to. The next brand was Jouer and I still haven't tried really anything from Jouer and I don't think I will. It's, it's, I don't want to force myself to try a brand just because it's something other people have tried and I want to get to know the formula. It, honestly, nothing enticed me and so... I didn't get anything. Next, I want to talk about the two skincare brands I said I wanted to try out because I just didn't. I did a lot of work on my skincare this year. I got to the point where I have a really nice skincare routine right now. I'll throw out my most recent skincare routine video up in the cards, but I think we're due for an update. So let me know down below if you want to see an updated skincare routine morning and night from me. I said in the original video that I wanted to try out Mario Badescu and Origins, and I didn't do either. The only product I use from Mario Badescu is the facial spray and if I'm being honest I don't think it actually does anything. It just feels nice and smells nice. And Origins, it's an expensive skincare brand and I know I used it back in college and I loved it. It worked really well for my skin but I don't want to have to spend that much money on skincare again because I've found a mostly drugstore skincare routine that is working just so well for me right now. And I don't want to get back into the habit of like repurchasing and using expensive skincare when I know I really don't have to. Okay, so let's now actually jump into the brands that I said I wanted to try and I did pick up some products from. The first brand is Touch of Glam Beauty, which is a uh, really small indie brand you can find on Etsy. And I really wanted to try out some more Etsy makeup. Ever since I saw Taylor Wynn do a video, it was like a full face of makeup from Eps, Eps, Epsy. <laughs> from Etsy. <laughs> I'm still setting it. Etsy. A full face of makeup from Etsy. And if I could find that video, I'll link it down below. Um, but you mentioned Touch of Glam Beauty, and I really wanted to try out some more like micro brands. And so I did pick up these three products right here from Touch of Glam Beauty. It is a blush, oh, no, not three. This is a Davina highlight. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my god. I picked up these two products. So this is a highlight and this is a glowy blush. The blush is a little too glowy for me. Let's see, specifically it is called Break of Dawn. It's a little too glowy for me, but it was the one that looked the most pinky peachy leaning, so I wanted to try it out. It's more of a blush topper. This is what you would wear if you're not wearing a highlight. It was definitely too much when I wore the two of these together, because this is a blinding highlight. Like, blinding highlight. Let's do a little swatch. I don't think it's coming up much on camera, but this, I put this on and I glowed to the gods. <laughs> So I really do like the highlighter formula. I'll probably pick up at least one more highlighter from this micro brand on Etsy. But the blush, I, I, I don't know. I'm not really going for a glowy kind of blush. This would be really good if you're doing a blush focused look. Like use it a bit into the crease and bring it up. Because it does double as a blush and a highlight. And it sounds a bit weird to say that, but it does. And it looks really pretty if you use it on its own. If you're trying to use another highlighter and just use this as a blush... It's not really going to work well. So I'm glad I tried out that brand and I do want to go back and pick up just a couple more highlights because I think this brand is really known more for their highlights than anything else. Okay, next I want to talk about two sister brands that I actually wanted to try this year. The first one was Certify Cosmetics. I was so excited in the original video for their concept palette, which was a blue-green palette. It came out, I purchased it, and unfortunately I had like a really bad reaction to that palette. I tried almost every shade in that palette, but I was getting 
irritated eyes. I was seeing bumps. It, and it was specifically from that palette, which made me very upset because I was really excited for that palette. I ended up sanitizing it and decluttering it to a friend of mine also here on YouTube. That got me a bit worried for Blush Tribe because Blush Tribe is a sister brand to Certify and I didn't know if they had the exact same formula or not. But I have tried this palette out. This is the Hasina 2. This is the first palette I picked up from Blush Tribe. And I've, I gotta say, I've only really used the green side. I'm not a huge fan of purple. I really just picked this up because I really wanted to try out Blush Tribe this year. And I don't really use the purples, but so far I've used the greens and I have not seen not anything close to the irritation I got with the Certify palette. So unfortunately, I think I'm just gonna not be able to use anything Certify. And with Blush Tribe, I'm just gonna have to be very careful. This might, this is probably the only palette I'm going to get and keep from Blush Tribe, specifically just for the greens, because I know I'm not touching these purples. So that's something I want to talk about a bit with this kind of project, was that I was really pushing myself to buy things, not because I wanted the product, but because I was like, oh, I have to buy one thing from each brand by the end of 2019, and that, that's not what like, I, I wanted to do with this project, but it's kind of what it turned into. So that was unfortunately a downer. Speaking of only buying things because of like this project, Ace Beauté. Ace Beauté came out with this Oceanic palette and it's beautiful. I specifically bought it because I said I wanted to try this brand in 2019. This is the only palette that really called to me and I have barely used it. Like I bought it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna do this, this, this. And I just, I just didn't have time for it. So I've used a couple of shades in here. I really need to do like a palette resurrection since this palette is so old by now. But yeah, it's nothing life changing. Um, honestly, I could have gone without this palette. Ace Beauté is more of like an influencer kind of brand where I really only see people like on YouTube using it. So um, meh. I think there's better. I think there's worse out there. Next up, Sugar Pill. I really wanted to try Sugar Pill and I was actually really excited about this because I do have a couple of Riley Rose stores around me. Actually, like one of them closed down. But Riley Rose sold Sugar Pill in store and they had the actual single shadows in store. And so whenever I went to that mall, I tried to like look at it and like make a palette. But every time I went, all the singles were sold out. I just couldn't. So that's why I was so excited when they finally came out with like this mini palette. But even though I was excited about this one more so than the Ace Beauté palette, this also took a back seat. I just didn't have time to like give it the time it like really deserves. I love everything about this. The colors are adorable. I love that it's video game themed. The hearts just get me. It's just, I love this, but I haven't had the time to like give it the chance that it deserved. Um, so I don't regret buying this. I just need to find some more time. <laughs> I, I've got a lot of eyeshadow palettes and I think having a uh, project where my main thing was to buy more eyeshadow palettes might not have been like the best. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, we have Lunatic Cosmetics Labs. I did buy something and I bought it on sale. Originally, I really, I, okay, so A, I love the aesthetic of this brand. Let me, let me show you the box that this came in because I, I love it. It's a tombstone and it says, here lies your face. This brand is honestly like my aesthetic <laughs> and I did keep the box. I love this. It's on display in my room. I'm still getting over the prices, but you know what? Screw it. I'm actually going to go through and actually buy the contour palette that I really wanted because even after everything else, this is the one brand that still intrigues me and I've only been able to pick up the one thing. So I picked up this Elvira palette. It was on sale for $10 and it actually is really pretty. I've used this a few times. Um, I love, it's got a nice heft to it. It feels very sturdy and I've tried the shades out a few times and I really like them. So I really want to pick up the contour palette. I'm still torn between which one to pick up, but I think one is clearly geared towards more lighter skin tones and that's the one I'm just going to have to pick up because I'm pale as fuck. <laughs> so yeah, I think out of everything, I'm glad that I put, um, Lunatic Cosmetics Labs on this list because I was dying to try them and I still am. I want to try more products from that brand. So out of everything in this list, I think the one I'm going to stay intrigued by and try out more in 2020, even though I really don't want to do this again. I don't want to make a list of like brands. I have to check off a list just to say I tried them. I really just want to focus more on shopping my stash 
and on picking up, I'm not going to go like on a low buy or a no buy, but I really only want to pick up things that I'm really interested in that are different from what I already have in my collection. I want to be a nice middle ground between like the minimalists and the people who just purchase all the time. I don't want to like not buy anything ever again because I still like makeup, but I also need to recognize what I already have in my collection and what I'm kind of neglecting already. So yeah, so that's everything that I said I wanted to try in 2019. Also kind of a fail, but I also did learn a lot from it and I'm ultimately I'm glad I experienced it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below if there are any brands that you wanted to try out, whether or not you tried them out, and if you did buy them, if you actually used the products. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.